G'day, I'm Melissa Shannon, founder of digital scrapbooking HQ.com, and today I'm here to show you how you can create a digital scrapbook page using Adobe Photoshop Elements. I'm here with you in Adobe Photoshop Elements 2023, but the process is very similar regardless of what version you're using. What you need to do is click on the photo editor button and that will bring you to the photo editor. Initially, you might be put into the quick mode, but for digital scrapbooking, we like to use the expert mode. You can click the layers button to see the layers in your scrapbook page. Click file new, blank file, choose scrapbooking, and then go with the defaults and that will create a 12 by 12 square scrapbook page. Of course, you can change it to whatever dimensions you like to use, but this is the one that I usually go with. So for today, I've already chosen my digital scrapbook elements that I want to use and the photo that I want to use, and I've opened them up in Photoshop Elements. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the photo bin if it's not already showing up, and then I'm gonna click and drag this photo onto the page. When it comes in, you can then resize it to however large you would like it to be. And I'm going to use some scrapbook paper from Pink Reptile Designs. I'm just going to drag them all on. That way I can choose which one I prefer for the background. If you want to look more closely at an area, you can use the zoom tool and just zoom in on the area you want to look at. I'm going to go back to my move tool and I'm going to start scrapbooking. When I create a scrapbook page, I usually just drag on any kind of embellishments that I'd like to use. I've already opened these all in Photoshop Elements. These embellishments are PNG files, so that means they have a transparent background. So when I drag it onto the photo, you can see the photo in the areas. They don't have a big white box around the shape of this flower. For example, I think this one might be fun around the title. So I'm going to make two of these. I'm going to drag a second one on and then I'm going to mirror it. Now you can see here in the layers panel, here's my photo and then that bracket went behind. So I'm just going to drag it up in the layers so I can see it. And then I'm going to click on the bracket, then click image, rotate and flip layer horizontal. So that flips my bracket. Now I've positioned this little bow on the button. So if I want to move them together, I can just hold down the shift button and move my mouse until I see the blue square highlight to let me know that I'm selecting the button and I'm gonna move them together. And again, they're kind of behind the other things. So I'm gonna drag them up in the layers panel. Now, as you can see, it's a bit of kind of trial and error. What do I think looks good here? What do I want to include in my page? I'm going to, I'm just basically clustering a lot of embellishments around the corner of the photo. We've got this little four leaf clover stamp, which looks kind of cute. I think I might use a slither of this paper, but there's a few ways you can change papers. You can just move them around, for example, like this and you no. Know, or you can cut a chunk out. So for example, if I move this one up to the top of my layers panel and then use my selection tool, I can go to new layer via copy, turn off that layer. And here I've got just a little piece of that paper. I can move it down in my layers panel to behind the photo. So I can use it kind of as a photo mat. But I am thinking I might crop my photo a bit differently. So when I crop photos, I just use my selection tool and I click and drag to create the shape that I want for my photograph. Make sure I have the photo layer selected and then I go up and click on the add layer mask. And now it's hidden the rest of my photo. So now I'm going to create the title. Let's go with four because Lucy's four in this photo. So I'm going to click and drag these letters on here. F, O, U, 
R. And once again, you can see they're scattered throughout the layers panel, just depending on where I've drag and dropped them. You can select them all, you can click and drag them right up to the top of the layers panel. And I'm going to use these as my title letters. So I'm going to select them all. I'm going to click on my move tool and I'm going to align them. So I'm going to align the tops so they're all lined up straight. My arrow keys to just move that for that R up and then I'm going to distribute the middles. Now because these are all letters that are the same width it looks pretty good. I'm just going to click on the F to move the layer with my arrow keys. And I'll reduce the size of these. Click on the left bracket, hold down my shift key, click on the right bracket and I will just move and adjust this until it looks how I like. So I'm pretty happy with how this looks. I'm just going to use another technique I love to um, add a border to this photo by going to the layer menu and then layer style. And I'm going to do a stroke and inside stroke I'm going to change it to white, make it 15, ooh, maybe 30 pixels. Does that look good? I click OK. Now right now my page is starting to come together, but it still looks a little bit flat. With digital scrapbooking, you can go for a fully digital look or you can imitate the look of paper scrapbooking. So I'm going to show you how you can add some shadows. To add a shadow to any layer, just click on the layer and then go to the layer menu and click layer style, style settings, and then choose drop shadow. You can preview what your drop shadow is going to look like while you're in the style settings dialog. So you can play around with the shadow settings. For something fairly flat like a piece of paper, a size of 5, distance of 3, an opacity of 35% with a lighting angle of 120 degrees looks I great. I like to use shadow styles that have different levels of shadows set up for different things. So for example, this is a button shadow that I can use for the buttons or a string shadow that I could use for my string and a paper shadow that I can use for my paper and a flat ribbon shadow. Oh, I just noticed something else that needs a shadow, this little flower. Not sure about this little layer here, so I'm just going to click on the eye icon to hide it. I'm going to duplicate this stamp layer by going to layer, duplicate layer, and then I'm going to move it so that it kind of goes across the whole page. Another way you can duplicate a layer is by holding down the Alt key and dragging it. And again, if I want these stamps to go behind, the photo, I just drag it down on the layers panel. I don't mind those in the white space of the photo. I wonder if a bigger piece of paper would look good here. So I'm going to hide that layer and hmm, I don't know. I might even like that, like that. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you like the frame paper better or the grid. That's one thing I do like about digital scrapbooking. You can just play around with different backgrounds until you're happy. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of text. I'm going to use the type tool here. I'm just going to type Lucy age for June 20. Now you might say, be saying, Melissa, I cannot see the text at all. What's happened to it? Let's see, we can double click on it and we can see that the color is white. That's no good. Let's choose a color. Let's go with that gray. Ah, there we go. We can see it better now. We can also see our typos. If we make a typo, just double click on the text and you can edit it later. And if you have more to say, you can always draw an entire text box by clicking and dragging a box shape and then type and you can type as much as you like and it'll wrap to the shape of your text box. There's lots you can do with the type tool. So check out my video about the type tool if you'd like to learn more. I'm going to delete this layer because I don't need it. All you need to do is click on the delete button in the layers panel or press the delete key. Let's save our work. And if you want to save it to print it, you can click save as, 
choose the JPEG and then click Save. Choose the largest file you can and then click OK. The PSD file here will retain all of its layers. It'll be editable. The JPEG will just be good for printing. As a little thank you for watching to the end of this video, I have got special permission from Miriam from Pink Reptile Designs who created these digital uh, papers and embellishments. And I'm going to link you up to, so you can download and create your own page for someone special in your life. And please go ahead and support her by purchasing others of her beautiful designs. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see more of my videos, click subscribe and then click the bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos. And if you'd like to learn more about digital scrapbooking or Photoshop elements, head to digitalscrapbookinghq.com.